close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And try to stay with the sensation of the breathing. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know it's going out. As for your other thoughts, you don't have to pay any attention to them. Just stay right there with the sensation of the breathing. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Try to find a rhythm of breathing that feels good for the body right now. It gives you energy if you're tired and calms you down when you're overexcited or tense. And this way you're developing good qualities in the mind, qualities like mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind for a long period of time without switching around all the time. Alertness, watching what you're doing, and ardency. When you see that you're doing something wrong, you try to correct it. When you're doing something right, you try to maintain it. We develop these good qualities in the mind because if there's going to be goodness in the world, it has to come from goodness inside. And goodness inside doesn't just happen on its own. The mind has all kinds of potentials. As the Buddha said, the mind is more variegated than the animal kingdom. You think of all the different animals in the world, all the different sizes and types and shapes. You know, the mind is capable of more variations than that. Everything from really bad to really good and all the variations in between. So we have to train the good qualities so they become stronger. They can push out the bad ones. And this is how we start, developing these qualities of mindfulness, alertness, ardency, and learning how to gain some control over where we're focusing the mind, realizing that we do have the choice. We can focus on all kinds of things. You can focus on the sound of the airplane, the sound of the crows. But instead, you're going to focus on the sensation of the breath. You let the crows in the airplane do their own thing. You don't try to stop them. But you do stop the mind if it starts paying attention to them. You keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath. And when the breath is comfortable, it becomes more and more pleasant to stay here. It puts the mind in a better mood, and when it's in a better mood, it's more likely to do the good things that it knows should be done. Because we have lots of choices in life. There are things we like to do that give good results, things we don't like to do and give bad results. Those are no-brainers. The, problem, the, the problems are with the things that we like to do that will give bad results and the things we don't like to do that will give good results. In the first case, you have to learn how to talk yourself out of doing those things that will give bad results, even though you like to do them. You have to convince yourself that, no, you don't, really don't want that. And the same thing with things that will give good results but you don't like to do. You learn how to talk yourself into doing them and to be happy to do them. You've got the opportunity to create long-term welfare and happiness. So why throw that away for some short-term benefits? Think of the long term. When you do this, you're developing more goodness inside, and that goodness is going to spill out into the world. If you try to change the world without developing goodness inside, you can create all kinds of trouble. But if you start with a good foundation like this, then what you build on top of that foundation will be good. So pay careful attention to the foundation. Make sure that it's strong, because then it will support all kinds of good things both inside and out.